Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to this morning service. David says in Psalm 122, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I'm inviting you, church, to stand with me as we worship God, singing the hymn, crown him with many crowns. In your love, you called us to follow you. In your grace, you have told us you are forgiven, holy, and always. In your care, you call us beloved. And in your mystery, you have given us hope of a better world to come in Jesus' name and through his teaching. Loving God, as we continue this season of celebration, carrying with us hopes and doubts, worries and joys, weariness 
and hope. Be with us, we pray, today and in all days. Amen. I'm going to invite Dorothy to read for us our first reading. <coughs> First John chapter 3 verses 1 to 3 See what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called the children of God and that is what we are The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him Dear friends now we are children of God and what we will be has not yet been made known but we know that when Christ appears we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Amen. Thank you, Dorothy. Let's stand together and sing our next hymn, Friend of Mine. Discussing about the resurrection. So, as 
it a bodily resurrection or was it a spiritual resurrection? So again, you're welcome to come and we will discuss that and we hope to enhance our faith in discussing the resurrection. On the 25th of April, we are going to have the union service. Please note this will take place in Dantoka Trinity Church at 7 p.m. That will be a union service between Dantoka and Faithly. And it will also be an introduction of Reverend Gregor McIntyre as the minister of the new parish. Can I just add, Linda, could you go back one slide? I came in the door and was just asked to add to that. Uh, if I just can say uh, that for the, the union service, it really matters that we show our readiness to unite by attending the service uh, in Duntalker Trinity to show that there's a sense of us coming together to be one congregation. And transport is being organised. It's not a big distance, but to make it easy, if you are needing transport, uh, then put your name on uh, that is a notebook with lovely corner cutouts. You'll recognise it when you get out there. It's on the faraway table. Put your name down saying that you need transport from home uh, and we'll find someone that's ready to pick you up and take you along there. It's as easy as that. It's only down the road. Uh, and if it, but if it's any difficulty, for whatever reason, just put your name down and we'll make every effort to take you along. Uh, so thank you for that. Thank you, Knowledge. Thank you. I'll invite Dorothy to read our second reading. It's Luke 24. Verses 36 to 44. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled, and why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Amen. Thank you. It is the time to give our offering to the Lord. Generous God, giver of all we need, help us to be more generous with our love, help us to be more generous with our time, 
Help us to be more generous with our giving for others and your glorious creation. Take what we offer and may it be a blessing to some in a small way. Amen. By Greca to give us the sermon. How deep is it? No, we can sing a hymn first. Sing a hymn. That's a hymn. Okay, let us sing together and sing our right, next hymn. How deep is the Father's love? to see you. I've been conducting worship down at Waterfront just in case you're wondering, not having a lie-in, having had a holiday and got used to it. Uh, so I'm glad to be with you. But I'm going to tell you about Biarritz. Just to slightly rub it in that I've been in such a beautiful part of the world. But also because of something that I got up to for a wee while there. And it was a little bit time spent surfing. You might well giggle because I wasn't very good at it. I certainly didn't get to my feet. I, I, ha, I and Catherine and I had our hotel looking out on one of the long beaches, the one south of Biarritz if you know the place. There's one to the north and one to the south. And we saw all these folks get out clad in their neoprene wetsuits with her arm wrapped round a surfboard. And some of the surfboards were tiny. And you know you're really good if your surfboard's tiny. The one I borrowed was huge. It was a beginner's, not surprisingly. And I've never had a lesson. I probably should have, but I didn't. I just borrowed, rented a board and a suit. And they said to me, 
No, you don't tell us how long you're going to be because nobody's got a clue what time it is on the waves. We just charge you whenever you come back. Okay, that's fine. So off I set thinking, an hour and a half, two hours? Well, I went out and on my first wave, I had turned around to face the beach. I had paddled to get a little bit of speed so that I could get the wave properly and I'm lying on the board and the wave caught me and I raced in like a steam locomotive. The noise in my ears and the water spraying around and I'm thinking, oh, this is easy, I like this. I remind you, I never got to my feet. I did get sitting up on my knees, no hands on the board. Not for long, because I was thrown in the water shortly thereafter. But on my second go, that's when something went kind of poing inside me. And I'm really, really tender down here. I'll tell you, I can really feel it if I cough or take a deep breath. Age. It's catching up. It's not exactly caught me yet, but it's catching up. And I had a go at wave after wave after wave. And some of them, I managed to ride in on the board. Great fun. And in some of them, the next thing I was doing was this. Not knowing whether I was going to face plant into the sand under the waves or get run over by the rudders the keel rudders on the skateboard, the blades. And I thought, I'd better protect the money maker. I put my hand across. And I did it till I was exhausted. And I was absolutely shattered and thought, actually, I'm not going to get any better. I'm only going to end up misjudging and doing myself a mischief. So that's when I came in and discovered that I hadn't been out for two hours or even an hour and a half. I'd been out for 45 minutes and I was worn out. And I got up on top of the promenade where all the stalls are and I'm thinking, oh boy, I felt like I'd been put through the ringer. And we all know that feeling. It comes with the first afternoon you spend in the garden. Sorry, I'm just hearing the feedback a little bit here. I'm going to try the other mic. Is that what you're thinking about, Kenneth? Yeah. And I'll put this one off and see how we're doing. So the first, there we go, let's get rid of that anyway. Uh, the first afternoon you spend in the garden or that day that you decide to shift a room about and bring out all the furniture and put the lounge sofa over there and the dresser in that corner and then you don't like that after all and you put it back and you're thinking afterwards oh, I should have asked someone to help or take your pick there's all sorts of things we get up to playing with grandchildren or whatever else it is and you just know it's nipping at your heels like it never did before and then, and then there are those moments when it's not the body that's feeling the drain of energy and the sense of, I'm done. It's the mind, it's the spirit. When there's been crisis after crisis and your head is just spinning with it. When there's been calls on your energy and your stamina and you're not sure you can answer another one. You feel you've been put through the ringer. Squeezed out, worn out, left up to dry. The disciples had been through that. There was a great and glorious day of Palm Sunday. And they had praised God for sight of Jesus going into Jerusalem. They were bewildered 
when the crowd turned against Jesus. Bereft when they learned he was condemned to die. In tears at the sight of him dragging the crossbar, the crucifix, which Simon of Cyrene would be forced to carry all the way. Beyond that too, there was watching him die if they had come back to Golgotha or sight of it. They had heard a whisper or had believed something had happened on Easter Sunday. Good news. But then Easter Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday came and it was hard to keep believing. Well, in Luke 24, as Dorothy read, for the 12 who had become 11, Jesus comes and stands among them. They, of course, are frightened. Where did he come from? What's he doing? Why? How? And it's just another, another draw on their capacity to think and understand and incorporate the idea into their very person. How could it happen? They're troubled, Jesus says. Why? You've got doubts rising in your minds. Why? Look, he says. And he shows his hands and feet. Touch me and see. Do you think they were slow? Well, remember, Peter's there. And Peter was always straight in. He, th- he acts first and thinks later. He would have been up on his feet and grabbing hold. And not just in his hands. He'd be holding Jesus. Is it really him? From head to foot. And then there'd be an embrace. And then he would remember himself. And <coughs> He would have hugged. And yet... Is it overwhelming? That sense of something bigger than yourself that you have to get used to. And we know that for the disciples at that moment, they're being invited to believe in something that is good news. It's not a shift in the world that will bring them to their knees worn down again. It's lifting them to their feet so that they can go to Jesus, hold him. Because the sign that he is real is, have you got something to eat? And they did, they had broiled fish. And if they hadn't believed that Jesus really was there, well, they would really believe the broiled fish had gone. It wasn't on the plate. It had been eaten. And Jesus speaks to them. And they look at each other as they listen. And they're all listening to the same person, to the same thing at the same time. Why? Why be troubled when you have what you need? And here is one of the answers for all the troubles that can visit us, all the overwhelms, all that spins your head and requires you to realize your world or someone who matters to you's world is different now. Hold on to him. Hold on to him who comes to say, touch me, see me. It's flesh and blood. 
Ghosts don't feel like this. Of course, we have to give the measure of this to others. We have to demonstrate that we believe that resurrection means the world is different. That this is something that gives us a new way of seeing the world now that we believe this. Whether we have believed for many years or believed more recently. We need to sow it into our lives so that there is resurrection within us. One day, when Jesus comes back, we will be like him. We will be transformed to be whatever Jesus is now. And we will jump to join that train or army of saints that crowns this world when Jesus comes back to demonstrate that the forces of evil may have won a battle but never ever the war but today tomorrow tomorrow after that you need to be believing that Jesus is real. You need to find the way within your own praying to be close to him, near to him, able almost to reach out and touch. I've had experience of the closeness of Jesus that makes him more real to me than very many people. You I see every week. You're real to me. Jesus is as real. I spend every day with Catherine. Jesus is as real to me as Catherine is. There's just no difference in the reality of Jesus this side of crucifixion he is a risen Lord and when I speak to him when I experience his spirit when in vision I've caught sight of him then it changes me I hope to be equal to every trouble that comes my way. Every challenge that I have to face. I do so believing that Jesus is with me. I meet it believing that Jesus has an interest in me coping with. Whatever happens, and frequently being successful in dealing with difficulties. And even as I speak of it in front of you, there's a part of me that I can imagine within my spirit, hands reaching up to hold on to Him. And it's convincing to me. Or I can open my spirit to the spirit Jesus sends. And it's just like he's in this place with us. Not indefinably. Not as fine as gossamer. Not just the name echoing from the walls. But Jesus a man who walked in Galilee knows how to stand with his people as we worship his father together. Fair enough, Gregor. You're the minister. You're meant to be able to say things like this. 
And maybe some of you can as well. But not everything is sewn up in faith. The science is not sewn up. The explanation for resurrection is not signed and sealed and written down for every person to read and go, oh, that's how it happened then. Faith brings us that knowledge. But in 1 John, what we are told is that we are children of God. Who is the firstborn? Jesus. We know that answer. He is first and, and then now we are his children. This is what we are. We are meant to have that kind of relationship that we know not just one another but our saviour too. And what a friend we have in him. What we will be <clears throat> has not yet been made known. There are mysteries still. Things that we are not told about our resurrection. The kingdom we are going to. There are hints in scripture. There are things we can piece together. But what really matters is whatever it is like, we will be like Jesus. That's what 1 John tells us boldly and clearly. We will be like him and we'll see him as he is. In the meantime, we are to live more like the disciples than the saints who have gone to glory since their day. You and I are to live as men and women who find a way to hold on to him through our faith. Finding the name of Jesus when you say it fills you with a sense of his presence, a sense of his power, a sense of his peace. That might be your experience. It might be that when you sing songs of praise and psalms, then as your voice rises to meet the notes required, so does your spirit and you believe as the words guide you to believe. Or it might be that life's history has told you that when it gets difficult, that's when your mind turns to him. When he comes, not suddenly as he did to the room with the disciples, to eat what they were eating and say, here, that was a story, an event that happens, that we can read it and learn from it. What is Jesus like now? Read Luke 24 again and see what Dorothy spoke to us about and what I've repeated But find the way of inviting and discovering Jesus in your life, in your spirit, in your mind, in your prayers and the praise you offer so that you can say as I do, I know my Saviour lives. He lives in me. And when he lives in me, there is a chance of his love and his respect, his compassion, all those things that are fruits of the Spirit are still active in the world. 
helping us to cope with difficulty or helping others whom we love and can assist cope with what comes their way. All who have this hope in Jesus purify themselves just as he is pure. We don't believe and hold on to Jesus just to go back into doubting and being tossed about like a cork on the waves or a useless surfer on the waves. We know that out of those waves we can walk and find our feet on ground that is increasingly firm, solid and secure where we know that with God's help we are in control. Find him. Seek him. Hold on to him. And you will know the blessing that his company gives and the faith it produces as the disciples did from that day. And if you want to know what was written in Moses, the prophets and the Psalms, what Jesus said next in John 24 what is told is that the Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations. And you are the witnesses of these things. This is why you need to know and hold on to him. Because if you are not the witnesses who is? Who will witness to those you share your life with? Those you meet as neighbour, call as friend. If it's not you, who? And if it's not you, why not? The truth of Jesus' life and resurrection and the purpose of it, the forgiveness of our sins, this is why he comes. Amen. Let's pray together. Almighty Lord Jesus, we ask for your company. We need your presence. We want to be certain that you are near us. Be close to us. That we might find our feet walk on solid ground. That our heads can be looking up to heaven. Certain that you will go with us to every challenge in the week ahead. And that we will take his love and his interest and his blessing with us and to others. We pray for those who are struggling at this time, caught up in the storms of life. May they discover Jesus to be the lighthouse in the storm, the safe harbour. And may those who are discovering their world turned upside down by illness or mourning, might they know that you are the one who comes with peace, that allows us to continue believing with hope and encouragement that there is purpose in all that happens. For we are involved in your work, your mission to this world. Amen.
I'll look at you and you can look at me and we'll wait for the Sunday school to come up. Let me say a warm welcome to those online. I didn't do it earlier when I came to the pulpit. Thank you very much for uh, joining us for this service this morning. Uh, and friends, we are approaching a time of union uh, and it really matters. One thing, I, d I, I think I said it 30 odd years ago uh, and probably not since because I haven't needed to. Let's remember that over the coming months, we may have folks that will come from Dantoker Trinity uh, to worship with us here in what will then be their church too. There is no such thing as, can you finish a sentence? You should never say that's my seat. It might be the one you sit in regularly, come early next week. If somebody's in it, welcome them and say hello. There is no such thing as my seat. There is, hello, move along and I'll say hello to you. That's as close as you can get to that. So make friends, uh, and that is really important. Are they, are they there? No? Thank you, Kenneth. Great. I'll let you take over again, Knowledge. Yeah, you're going to speak to the children? soldiers we give the pot and they put their stone there so the water boiled and then they tasted this well it's fine but if we could only have some little salt so one villager said okay I can give you salt and they give salt so the other one tasted it. if we can only have some tomatoes and another villager said okay here are the tomatoes until all the villagers put in some ingredients into the soup and the soup was very nice and everyone shared the soup and they were very happy. So, as we are planning to have the Jantoka Sunday School come together with us, we want you to share everything you have with them. Even all of us as the church, we hear this story 
He must share everything we have. As Gregor says, there is no one going to say, this is my seat, or we have to bring everything we have and we're going to have something nice together because we'll, we will have shared. So, I hope we'll have a good time when the Datoka people join us. Thank you. Okay, let us sing our next hymn, Go Tell It on the Mountain.
Amen.